Hello, hello, third grade. Happy Tuesday. As you know, we have a special guest today. So I'm wondering who in the world it could be who is coming to our Zoom meeting. So come at 10 so you can all find out who it is. And I'm sharing my screen with you so we can go over the daily assignments. We have a lot of things going on, but they're all fun things, I promise. So let me zoom in a little quick for you. Um, so I shared with you last night your um, book club Google Documents. I shared it through email just so you can kind of get an idea of who's in your group. And then I also posted all of your groups um, and your slides to uh, Google Classroom. It's under book club. So you're not doing this until tomorrow, but the reason why I wanted to get started with this today was one, I just wanted you to kind of look through. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. And two, I wanted you to see who was in your group so that if you wanted to set up um, a little meeting to read the chapter together, or if you wanted to talk about it at the end or go through what you've written at the end, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to also post a video tomorrow going through all the instructions for that as well um, so that you know exactly what it is that you're doing. But it might be fun if your parents can help you if you're capable of setting up yourself. And it's okay if you can't, but it might be fun if you can talk about the book together either in Google Chat or um, to video if that's okay with your moms and dads, okay? Um, and so... The reason why I'm having an off day for grammar and the digital journal is because there are a lot of videos that I do want you to watch today. Um, so I really want you to take your time on each of these subjects. So reading, um, you're reading chapter 12 in completing slide 16 in Sideways Stories from Wayside School. And then once again, because book club starts tomorrow and I kind of want you to talk about it, go to Google Classroom, click on it, don't do anything. But you can just kind of go through and once again, figure out who's in your group. Um, all your names will be at the top where it says um, group members and your names will be up there. So maybe that's what I was saying. You can set something up. That's optional, but it's a book club. So it might be fun if you can do that. All right, writing. Okay, so this is where um, a big focus is today. Should animals be kept in zoos? It's your first draft, but you are including something new in your first draft. So as usual, you have your attention grabber, your opinion, three reasons, but they're supporting details, and then a counter argument after your reasons, okay? So what is a counter argument? I um, have a few resources here for you. So the first one is just a YouTube video that goes over it really well. Um, I really liked this video. But then I reviewed um, what a counter argument is. I gave you a few examples, one from Mr. Jake. Um, so go on and see what Jake's counter argument was. And then um, modeled a little bit of the first draft. I didn't write the whole thing out for you, just the counter argument this time, because you should be able to start writing your first draft by yourself. Um, and then here are the slides from my video, because my video is on Google Slides that I shared. So if you want to go back to see more examples, you can click on the slides. Um, it's a review lesson today. I will tell and write time to the nearest minute for math. Um, and then science, you are answering the lesson two and a mystery question. At Social Studies, we'll be having our next practice tomorrow on Zoom, so please make sure you're there, especially if you weren't there on Monday, a few of you were missing. Um, it's important that we practice these and use our expression, and if you have any props you wanna bring, go for it. Music, I've heard from a few people that music, that the link isn't working. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, so you do have to join her classroom in order for her link to work. And these are the steps to join it. So if you haven't done that already, you need to do that. And then she has um, instructions for you under third grade for what your lesson is today. All right, so those are all of your assignments. And now we're gonna finish reading this chapter because we've been reading this for a while, it's a long one. So Sophie said she was gonna read one more of the boy dreams. So it says, I has written a book and it is so exciting, nobody can put it down. As soon as you has read the first line, you was hooked on it, and you can't stop reading until the last page. In all the cities, people is walking in the streets, bumping into each other because their faces is buried in my book, and dentist is reading it and trying to fill teeth at the same time, but nobody minds because they is all reading it too on a dentist chair. 
Drivers is reading it while driving, and cars is crashing all over the country. Brain surgeons is reading it while they is operating and brain on brains, and airplane pilots is reading it and going to Timbuktu instead of London. Football players is reading it on the field because they can't put it down, and so is Olympic runners while they is running. Um, everybody has to see what's going on to happen next in my book. And when I wake up, I am still tingling with excitement and being the greatest writer the world has ever known until my mommy comes in and says, I was looking at your English exercise book last night, and really, your spelling is atrocious, and so is your punctuation. That's enough for now, the BFG said. There's billions more, but my arms is getting tired of holding you up. What are all those over there, Sophie said. Why have they got such tiny labels? That, the BFG said, is because one day I was catching so many dreams I was not having the time or energy to write out long labels. But there was enough to remind me. Can I look, Sophie said? The long-suffering BFG carried her across to the jar she was pointing to. Sophie read them rapidly, one after the other. I was climbing Mount Everest with just my cat for company. I was inventing a car that runs on toothpaste. I was able to make the electric lights go on and off just by wishing it. I was only an eight-year-old little boy, but I was growing a splendid bushy beard and all the other boys was jealous. I was able to jump out of any high window and float down safely. I has a pet bee that makes rocks and roll music when it flies. What amazes me, Sophie said, is how you ever learned to ride in the first place. Aw, said the BFG. I've been wondering how long it is before you asking me that. Considering you never went to school, I think it's quite marvelous, Sophie said. How did you learn? The BFG crossed the cave and opened a tiny secret door in the wall. He took out a book, very old and tattered. By human standards, it was an ordinary sized book, but it looked like a postage stamp in its huge hands. One night, he said, I was blowing a dream through a window and I seized this book lying on the little boy's bedroom table. I wanted it so very badly, you understand, that I was refusing to steal it. I would never do that. So how did you get it, Sophie asked. I borrowed it, the BFG said, smiling a little. Just for a short time, I borrowed it. How long have you had it, Sophie asked. Perhaps only about 80 years, the BFG said. Soon I shall be putting it back. And that's how you taught yourself to write, Sophie asked. I was reading it hundreds of times, the BFG said, and I am still reading it and teaching new words to myself and how to write them. It is the most grim to ambitious story. Boys and girls, that's incredible that he took this book and taught himself how to read and write that shows that you can do anything if the BFG can do that. Sophie took the book out of his hand. Nicholas Nickleby, she read aloud. Red dolls, chickens, BFG said. Who? Sophie said. Just then, there came a tremendous noise of galloping feet from outside the cave. What is that? Sophie cried. That is all the giant zip fizzing off to another country to guzzle human beings, the BFG said. He quickly popped Sophie into his waistcoat pocket and hurried to the cave entrance and rolled back the stone. Sophie, peeping out of her spy hole, saw all nine of the fearsome giants coming past at full gallop. Where is you off to tonight, chattered the BFG. We is all of us flush funking off to England tonight, answered the flush lump eater as they went galloping past. England is a luxurious land and we is fancy a few nice little English chivalers. I, shouted the main masher, is knowing where there's a giggle house for girls and I was guzzling myself full of a frock blower. And I know where there's a boggle box for boys, shouted the gizzard gulper. And I has to, all I has to do is reach in and grab myself a handful. English boys is tasting extra lick squishy. In a few seconds, the nine galloping giants were out of sight. What did he mean, Sophie said, poking her head out of her pocket. What is a giggle house for girls? Uh-oh. Do you remember where Sophie came from? He's me in a girl's school, the BFG said. He will be eating them by the bundle. Oh, no, cried Sophie. And boys from our boys' school, said the BFG. It mustn't happen, Sophie cried out. We've got to stop them. We can't just sit here and do nothing. There's not a thing we can do, the BFG said. We as helpless as horse feathers. He sat down on a large, craggy blue rock near the entrance of the cave took Sophie from his pocket and put her beside him on the rock. It is now quite safe for you to be outside until he is coming back, he said. The sun had dipped below the horizon and it was getting dark. The next chapter is called The Great Plan. So they're gonna figure out, hopefully, a solution to this problem because those are all the girls that Sophie was with. So Sophie would never let that happen, hopefully.
but I, I don't know how they're going to stop this huge giant pup. Okay, so can't wait to see you at 10 to see who our special guest is. Woohoo! All right, talk to you later. Bye, everyone.